All right, how y'all doing? This is Rich coming back at you with another lens review. Today we're taking a look at the Yashica Auto Yashinan or Yashinan DS 50mm f2 lens. This is for the f M42 mount. It is a it goes up to aperture 16, minimum focus is di distance is 5. Uh, this lens, or they start producing lenses like this back in 1961. I couldn't figure out if they had any coatings or anything like that. It does have six aperture blades and I think five or six elements. I do have a lens cleaning video for this exact lens. That's on my channel. So if you guys are interested how this thing comes apart, I do have a video for that. So I did use the adapter that I have and I put it on my Sony a7R2. So all the photos before and after of this video are with this Sony a7R2 and this exact lens. I am filming currently with the SMC Pentax believe it's the M. It is the M. SMC Pentax M 50mm f2. So if you like the way it looks, I do also have a review on that exact lens. All right, before we get into it, I want to thank my friend Barney for sending me this lens. If it wasn't for him reaching out to me and sending me this lens to clean up and do a review on, I wouldn't be able to actually make this video. So thank you very much for doing that. And also I'd like to thank God for allowing us to take these amazing photos. Again, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be able to take any of these amazing photos. So thank God for that. All right, we got the four categories. We're gonna take a look at the affordability, the accessibility, the build quality, and the versatility of this exact lens. It is a 50 mil, so remember that it's gonna be full frame 50 mil or 35 millimeter film lens, uh, camera that's gonna be a 50 mil. Uh, when you go into crop sensor, you're looking at 75. When you go to micro four thirds, you're looking at 100 millimeters. All right, so first category, we're taking a look at the affordability. So for me, that's a six. And the reason why I put it as a six is because for some reason, there's very few of these lenses, at least here in America, my country. I could find very few of these copies after market. Most of the copies that I found individually were on eBay and they were going for almost a hundred or over a hundred dollars. Now, if you got lucky, you could find it with a 35 millimeter vintage camera attached to it. And that was actually around $60. Some of them were 40. So really weird. And that's including shipping because that's what I'm looking at is the entire price. So for me, that's definitely a six just because of the white birth of, you know, how expensive this lens is. Now, comparatively to a modern lens that would you would use that has autofocus auto aperture all that stuff do i think it compares in that aspect or price wise i think it is a better deal than some of those lenses but again there is that learning curve so for me it's a six not totally a two or a one because it's you know crazy astronomically expensive for an aftermarket third-party vintage lens it still has some value to it and there is value in it so it's a six for me so next, let's take a look at the accessibility of this lens. It is an easy, simple lens to use when it comes to throwing the focus and using the aperture. Everything clicks, they're in the right spots, it's not that hard. With that being said, it only goes up to f16. I don't know if there's a coating. I couldn't find out if there was a thorium coating. I couldn't find out if there was any other type of coating. It does look like it has some sort of coating, but it does let in, it does let in a ton of light. And this lens is fantastic with the bokeh but with how much light it lets in i was cranking up that shutter speed to like a thousand just to get a good a shot on a cloudy day on a very cloudy day uh just to get it at f2 which is is pretty insane so throwing a, a, a filter on it would definitely help uh but without a filter that's you know that's more money that it's just that makes it a little bit more difficult to use and then when I was trying to focus to affinity, I almost wish I had a little bit more throw of focus. It felt like I just needed it to go a little bit further, which could be an issue with just the mount and the way it sits in, you know, the old school camera bodies. Uh, that's something you can adjust by taking the lens apart, but not everybody knows how to do that. So for me, that is a seven. It is not super duper uh, accessible, but not absolutely horrible. All right, next, let's talk about the build quality. The build quality is an eight for me. I think the glass is really, really good, even though it lacks the coating. I think it, even though it's been rough and tumble, as you can see, well, you can't see it right now, but I'm looking at it, it looks like it had a rough and tumble life, but there's nothing really rattling, nothing really shaking. It was super easy to service, which I do really appreciate Appreciate when they are super easy to service. Some of the paint has chipped, but all the lettering is still there. There's no oil on the aperture blades and everything looks tip top, especially if it was made in the 60s, this is a fantastic 
quality lens. So for me, it's an eight. It's not dust proof, it's not weatherproof, and it doesn't have a coating. So that's just gonna be an eight for me on that one. All right, so now, now let's talk, uh, talk about the versatility. What can you do with this lens? It's a 50 mil, so it's super versatile, so it's definitely an eight. But like I said, the thing that's kind of hindering it is the fact that it does let in so much light. It can use a filter. You can put a filter on it and that kind of eliminates some of your issues. But the fact that it only goes up to f-stop 16 eliminates a lot of the, uh, you know, slow shutter speed photography that I like to do when I'm doing street photography. But of course, you're going to be great with portraits. It's going to be great for street photography, good for landscapes. Uh, architecture is going to be pretty good, but you know, anything inside the house or anything close up is going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, I think if you want to do wildlife photography, it's going to be difficult. But overall, 50 is like a really versatile lens. So for me, that's an eight. So that said and done, overall score for this exact lens is going to be a seven out of 10 or 7.25, but a seven out of 10. And would I recommend this lens? This one is a toss up for me. So let me dive into it a little bit first. To me, this is, besides the Nikkor 55 that I reviewed, uh, which is a Nikkor 3.55, this is a super modern looking lens. And when I mean modern looking lens, it's really hard to make it seem vintage. A lot of the photos I took looked extremely crisp, extremely uh, modern to me, what I would imagine what modern lenses can do. And that's what I got from this lens is like, this would be a perfect night street photography lens. This would be a perfect lens for action shots or doing, you know, more of an, uh, a serious, you know, gym aesthetic photo shoot like I've done in the past. This would be perfect for that. The, the colors and everything aren't super poppy like you get with some of the SMCs, but it's just really just almost not gritty, but it's just super realistic to me. And that's where it really compares to some of the 50 mils and the 28s that I have that are modern lenses. So if you really want that modern look where people would just be like, oh, they're probably just using a modern camera system. If you want to get away with, you know, people thinking you're using some of the nicest, newest lenses for your native system, this is going to be the ticket. This is like one of the, the most modern looking lenses I've seen. Now, if you want to go to the vintage photography type and stuff like that, this is not going to really give you that unless you do a lot of post-production work. But straight out of camera, this is going to look super modern, which is amazing and really striking to me, especially with how much bokeh you can get from this lens and looking so modern. So with that being said, if you really need that look for the photos and videos you need to take as someone that's starting out, I would recommend it in that case because you're going to spend a lot less money getting one of these, especially throwing in, if you get it with the camera body, you can have a film camera and have fun with that too. I think that's where I recommend it. Where I don't recommend it is if you just want to get a vintage lens because it's cheaper because then you have the SMC Pentax A 50mm F2, which you can get, or the 50mm uh, Pentax M you can get there's just extremely inexpensive lenses with fantastic coatings that you can do pretty much everything with and still with post-production you can get the exact same look out of this lens but straight out of the camera body this one's gonna be more modern looking now if you are an experienced photographer or somebody that has a little bit more experience this is gonna be a great interview lens it's not going to give you too much bokeh not going to really distort your your you know person too much or just a good portrait lens this would be it for me at least from my perspective for the type of photos that some of my clients like this is going to be the exact photo they don't necessarily like the colors coming from smcs they don't really necessarily like that vintage look but they like super hyper crisp accurate colored photos and that's where this is going to really stand out to me especially being so much less expensive than some of the 50 mils that I have to purchase or 35 mils. I can just get this one. It's super small. It's not gonna be super intrusive and I can just adapt it real quick and it's super nice. So that's what I like about it. And I didn't mention that before, but it's not that big it's even with the, the adapter, which actually makes it really nice. I probably should have mentioned that before, but oh well. See, again, most of these M42 lenses aren't that big. That's just something you get with them uh, compared to some of the other lenses. 
It is, it does seem it's around the same size as the Pentax M 50 mil, but you know, it's, it, it's, it's pretty nice. So for me, it's a, it's a maybe on both of them. Uh, would I recommend it? Maybe. Uh, you know, very niche situations where I'd recommend it for an amateur. And as a professional, very niche situations would I recommend it. What I think about the lens is I freaking love it. <laughs> Excuse my language, but I love this lens. I really do. I think it's, it has some of the coolest renditionings uh, I've seen out of the lens. It was a lot of fun to take apart. Uh, I can overcome some of the issues. Uh, you know, if I absolutely needed to depend on making sure I had good quality photos from the gate, not needing a filter, I'd go with the one of the Pentaxes. But this is a super unique lens and a fun one to run around. Absolutely, I'm going to use it for night for, for photo shoots for sure. It lets in tons of light. I'm not going to stop down the aperture too much at night. I think that's exactly what I'm going to use this lens for. All right. Well, thanks again to my friend Barney. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment. Look at all the photos at the beginning and the end of this video. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys soon. Thank you very much. God bless.